Greetings Critical Viewers! Welcome to my full playthrough of the Stanley Parable. This is the full release of the game. I've previously played the mod for Half-Life 2. And I've also played the demo. But I didn't actually sit down and play the full game that was released about a month ago. Until just now. So, I'm a little bit late to the party. But, better to be late than not come at all. Nobody likes a no-show. Alright, let's begin. So I have played the mod and the demo, so I kind of know what to expect, but not really. Which is kind of the point of the game. Alright. Also, for some reason, Bandicam doesn't record loading screens. Which is really weird. But right now it says, The end is never the end is never the end is loading! So there you go. Talking a little bit about the Stanley Parable, um, it started off as a mod course for Half-Life 2 and um, as far as I know it was developed by one dude um, and uh, they got him to uh, work on a full release of the game um, with a team of people so yeah this is this is not a another mod it's a standalone game and they got the narrator from the first game to uh, supply his vocal skills to this one as well and um, if you've never heard of this game, I'm not really sure what to tell you in terms of what to expect. It's just sort of an oddball game about the illusion of choice in video games. Kind of a commentary, if you will. And it does it in a very entertaining way. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Alright, so now we have control of Stanley. And actually this starts out in much the same way as the mod did. So it is a remake. Not so much a remake, perhaps a reimagining would be more descriptive. Alright, so... Where is everybody? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Not even this... who farted mug? That is a mystery. Maybe that's what cleared the room. Someone just farted. And that's as simple as it gets. What is this? Damn it, I can't read it when I crouch because it goes too low. He dedicates to it. I like we just who Johnny boobs. Johnny boss. I work hats. I don't know. What does that say? Damn it, what good are these mugs if I can't read them? That's the point Stanley of mugs. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. All right, I get it, I get it. I'm moving on. It makes a sound when I interact with the windowsill. I'm not sure why I need to get immersed in that, but okay. Ah, uh, 
I'm gonna, I can turn their computers off. I can sabotage their work. Hope you saved. Hope you saved your work, because it's all gone. Wow, nobody is around. One of the most fun things to do, at least in the mod version, is to piss off the narrator by not doing what you're told. Which is what I'm trying to do right Stanley now. Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. Okay. Well, taking low blows on me. Jeez. I hate Mondays. God. Okay, I work in an office building. And uh, one of the most boring things you can do on a Monday in the elevator with people you don't know is bring up that it's Monday. When Stanley so boring. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, so here we go. They, they want me to go into the one on the left, so I'm going to go into the one on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, that's right. Just to admire the employee lounge. Okay. So, um, so far this is actually following exactly the same path as the mod. It's just a little bit more elaborate in the uh, environments. And by that I mean the mod was basically empty hallways, so... Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <laughs> yes, yes, this is a very elaborate, crazy employee lounge. Coffee nut. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really and cold drinks. It. Don't forget the vending machine that says cold drinks on it, with a snowflake to indicate that it's cold. They're only a at buck twenty-five. Point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy, and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Wow. Taking some low blows. Shots fired. What is this? Fuel. These are some really Stanley shitty mugs. With him, but at last, he oh, had enough it. of the amazing room. I wanted to hear what he said. First open door on his left to get back to business. I wanted to hear what he said. Shit. All right. Well, come on. He was probably just gonna elaborate on one of his previous things. Okay, so there's an open door here. There's an open door here. Which one do we want to go into? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Uh, well, they want us to go into that one, so I guess this is I guess we're going through the rebellious way, which I'm a fan of, because it's the funniest way to play the game. Excuse me. You can't go back. All right, next thing it tells us to do, we're going to say no again. Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse. Holy crap. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift is $5,000. Also, a ton of medical bills and your death. Your, parent, your parents and your family have to pay for your funeral. Damn. That's an expensive fall. Let's just hop on it, I guess. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. All right, well, that was totally worth it. Not really. I just want to see what would happen. Okay, well, let's go this time. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Are you going to comment on how fast we're blazing through this shit? When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. All right, let's... And knew I gotta find well. out uh, Perhaps he wanted what's to the end of this the path. employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room... But eager to get back to business, 
Stanley took the first open door on his left. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, back here. Let's see what happens if we don't do Stanley that. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. All right. Look, Sorry. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy. Really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Hmm. Okay. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Who's her? She's been waiting. So what's the alternative? I don't know what the alternative is. To leave? I don't think it'll let me go back. Alright. Well, let's go. Good lord. Okay. Um, it looks like a door that goes into blackness. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. You're being a little dramatic about this. All right, fuck it. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. Oh! <laughs> gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Look at these jaggies. Look at these jaggies on the side of the doorway. You guys see them, right? Ew, gross! Hey, at least she greeted me this at the door naked. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Hey! What? Why? No! Two! Four! Seven! J! F! Fine, three. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. It doesn't respond! Damn it! Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now That's not he's true. going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Uh, nothing happens. But in his mind, oh, ah, oh, in his mind, he zero. can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. You're a the dick. The thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. 
and he called it the Stanley Parable. Okay, I get it. I get your stupid point. Okay? Let me back into it the game. It was such a wonderful fantasy. Oh and God. so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. All right, I love you. But there is no answer. Oh. How could there possibly be? <laughs> In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Oh, my God. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every <laughs> second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? They press 8 to question nothing. What if I don't press it? What happens? <sighs> Sorry. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Hey! And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I... Tr <laughs> okay. All right. So, what we've learned is that... Doing it that way is boring. So I guess this time we'll do it correctly um, and do what we're told. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and I will see you guys later for more Stanley Parable. Think critically.